Hey everybody, Donnie coming at you. Today I am gonna mess with this Stanley number no. five plane that I picked up recently while I was in Birmingham. It's in really good shape. Um, the only thing I really need to do is clean up the, the iron and the chip breaker. And I've already taken those guys out. And what I'm actually gonna use is something that I saw Jay Bates using, this uh, Evapo Rust. I picked it up at O'Reilly Auto Parts for around 10 bucks or so, uh, less than $10. So I'm just going to use a little kitchen container, uh, clean up the blade, uh, the iron and the chip breaker. Everything else looks really good. I'm just going to kind of wipe it off a little. I'm not trying to do a complete restore on this thing. I just want it functional and I want it to work for me. Uh, as per the instructions, I wiped off any oil or anything like that. It's pretty straightforward. This thing definitely needs some attention and I'm hoping that I can save the blade and the chip breaker so I don't have to really spend any money. I got a really Really good deal on this thing uh, 25 bucks or so 20 bucks maybe but it's really flat it's really straight it's a Stanley uh, Bailey number five once again so I'm just gonna put some solution in this container let these things soak for a few hours keep an eye on them and uh, we'll check the progress on them All right, here we are the next day. I let these, uh, this, the iron and the, the uh, chip breaker soak overnight. And man, what a huge difference. This stuff really, really works very, very well. So I'm gonna take this inside. Once again, as per the instructions, I'm gonna bring it inside, uh, clean it off with warm water, I believe it said, just to rinse it down. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, just basically clean it off with some warm water and uh, dry everything real good so where the, the rust doesn't get to it. And I may just spray a little WD on it or something like that just to kind of get an initial coat on it. But I'm going to clean that up and then bring you guys back and we'll uh, throw it on the stones real quick and see if we can get some sharpening happening out of this thing. Very clean. Very nice. Okay, I'm just gonna run through this real quick, probably speed up the film a little bit, but the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that the back side of this iron is flat. Once I know that the back side of the iron is flat and decent, decent polish on it on the end, I'm gonna basically flip everything over, go to my trend honing guide, which again, uh, was, was relatively inexpensive and works really well. I'll take and set the iron up in my trend honing guide. Once I set it up in my trend honing guide, I can then run through all of the grits and everything and get this thing polished up and really nice and sharp. So let's get this dude going. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my jig ready to go. I'm going to position my iron in the jig. Make sure it's flat and level where it's supposed to be. That looks pretty good. Tighten everything up a little bit. Double check it. Make sure that it's where I want it to be. And now we'll basically start through the process again of making sure that uh, we keep it lubricated. A lot of guys like to use um, window cleaner, which I don't really have any on hand at this particular moment. But basically you just want to take your fingers and apply pressure and use as much of the stone as you can. And I'm just going to show you, I know I only swiped it a couple of times, but it will already start to put an edge on this 
on this iron. I think this thing is going to really be okay. I think it's going to be really, really sharp once we're finished. I'm going to go ahead and run through all the grits as I did with the, with the back side of the iron. And then we'll take a look at the chip breaker. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this dude put together and see if it'll, uh, if it'll cut some wood. What you think? Seems like it cleaned up fairly well. There's maybe a little nick on this thing still. I may have to check with some folks and see about possibly redoing it a little bit differently, but so far, I believe, so good. And I'm not 100% sure. I may need to check. It's like the, the iron does not go all the way to the width of the sole. Let me grab another plane. This is my Wood River number four. So there's, there's possibly a little consistent gap there. So we may, we may be okay. Um, I'm going to try and sight down it to make sure that the, the iron is sticking out how it should be. And if you put your iron in and it's cocked one way or the other, this little lever back here, you push it to the side that's sticking out. And it will push it back down and give you more on the other side. So I think I've got it pretty much leveled in. Let me get some of this stuff moved out of the way, get the camera set back up in a different direction, and we'll take a look at how it goes. Okay, as you can see, I've got the plane back together. Been trying it out, just uh, tweaking things a little bit, getting the uh, shavings exactly where I wanted them to be. Turns out the angle on the iron was a little bit less, I guess you could say, than I wanted it to be. So I went over to my um, low-speed Rikon grinder, dialed things in the way I wanted it to look. Um, as far as the angle that I wanted, I kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, I kind of went closer to what my number four uh, Wood River plane is. Got everything cleaned up, put a little bit of light coat of three-in-one oil on the bottom of the sole, and she... Uh, she cuts really good now. It uh, just takes wonderful, wonderful shavings. This is some cherry that I milled up a little while back. And it uh, just glides like butter. 20 bucks basically is what I have in, I think, 20 dollars $25. The only reason I think I gave a little bit on the higher end is because there were really no pits in the sole. Everything looked really super clean. But I picked it up at um, City Hardwoods in Birmingham, Alabama when I was there a couple months ago working. And this thing just is nice. Number five, Bailey, Stanley Bailey number five plane with the aluminum tote on it. I love it. Hopefully this uh, encourages you guys to get out there, find a flea market, find somewhere, get you a good deal on a hand plane. Bring it in, throw it on some inexpensive stones, get this thing dialed in, and uh, you can mill you up, smooth up, and uh, get your wood ready to go for your project. 